Hi, I'm Glenn, a Tai Chi instructor with Bakersfield Elite Martial Arts. After over 20 years of uh, instructing, I've enjoyed watching students join our classes and discover the many benefits to be found in the practice of Tai Chi. Today, however, we find ourselves in an unusual situation. Because of the Wuhan virus, we're unable to provide instruction to our students in a classroom setting. We needed to be creative, and thanks to our YouTube channel, uh, Tai Chi American Style, we're able to continue providing our students, as well as others interested in Tai Chi, an opportunity to learn and continue to prog uh, continue progressing in the art. We'll start at the very beginning using the 24 form Wu style, breaking the movements into individual elements and explaining the intricacies of each movement. Although Tai Chi appears to be simple, there are many levels of complexity. First, we need to learn the mechanics of the movements. Once we have a grasp of the sequence, we can explore the subtleties of the movements. So you never really stop learning. You continue ex uh, to explore and gain knowledge about the form and, more importantly, learn a little bit about yourself. So let's begin. We'll start at the be very beginning uh, with the opening form. We start our exploration with the emphasis on posture. I like to use the major joints of the body as landmarks. Other instructors sometimes talk about uh, imagining you're suspended by a string at the top of your head. As a result, the joints fall into their natural position. Either way, we end up with the joints aligned correctly and it frees up the chest and rib cage, uh, permitting diaphragmatic breathing. So starting from the bottom, Try to imagine your knee joints and imagine that they're placed directly over your ankle joints. We want to keep the knees relaxed, not locked. Next, place your hips over your knees. In order to do this, you'll need to roll your hips slightly forward. The shoulders are positioned over the hips and held, uh, the head held upright in a relaxed manner. We tend to elevate our shoulders, so let's just allow them to relax uh, into a uh, comfortable position. Try to relax your arms so there's no tension. I look at the hands to gauge whether a student is relaxed. If there's space between the fingers, that tells me the hands are relaxed and comfortable. Once we establish the correct posture, we need to focus on the breathing. Inhale through the nose and exhale through your mouth. We're going to breathe normally and uh, our focus is going to be on the breathing. This focus on breathing is an essential part of the med meditative process of Tai Chi and is utilized in other forms such as yoga. You're going to notice that your abdomen expands uh, slightly as you inhale and then contracts uh, with the exhalation. This is your diaphragm doing its job. We're now ready to begin. First, we want to sink down. Think about your connection to the earth uh, below your feet. Imagine that you're solidly connected to the earth. Slowly shift your weight to the right leg and step out with your left leg about shoulder width. This next move kind of reminds me of the movie Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi is instructing Daniel on his unique method of painting a fence. Daniel's wrists are relaxed and the brush tip points down as he raises the brush and points up as uh, he lowers it. We're going to make a very similar motion with our hands as we raise them up a little higher than the shoulders. Begin to lower your hands. As the hands begin to move down, bend your knees as you drop your weight. Lower your body only as much as is comfortable. This is the position we're going to want to maintain throughout the rest of the form. When you complete the movement, bring your hands in close to your torso, placing the left hand over the right. Both palms are facing down. From this position, we're going to circle our hands counterclockwise. That's uh, from your perspective. The left hand extends upward as the right hand drops down. Begin to circle your arms from this point. As the hands near the completion of the circle, pull your left foot in to a T-step as the left hand passes the foot. When the circle is complete, your weight should be about 90% on the right leg and the left foot tucked neatly into uh, the, uh, next to the right foot in what is referred to as a T-step. 
This position is called hold the ball. What I want you to do is imagine that you're holding a ball just about the size of a basketball. Allow your hands to relax as the uh, hands follow the form of the ball. There should be that nice space between the fingers at this point. Allow your body to relax and focus on your breathing. This is just the beginning. As you can see, there is a lot going on just in the opening form. We're going to end this video here and allow you time to practice these new moves. As you practice, open your mind to the sensation of the movement and the shifting and distribution of your weight as you step out to the left, center, and then pull that left foot back in. Focus on your breathing as you perform these moves. In our next video, we're going to add the uh, next move in the form. It's called Part the Wild Horse's Mane. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please check out our Facebook page. Uh, it's called Bakersfield Elite Martial Arts. And uh, send us a message with your questions. So, until next time, uh, this is Glenn, wishing you good health.